We spoke a little bit the other day about the Word and heard a little bit about that. We want to kind of build on that today. In John chapter 1, it tells us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Now, it's like, in case you don't get that out of the first verse, he's going to repeat in the second verse and say, Do you hear what I'm telling you? He was in the beginning. It's not new here in the New Testament. He was in the beginning with God. He walked in the garden with man. Then Adam sinned and was driven from the garden, and the fellowship and communion were lost. Walking with God was lost. From Genesis to Malachi, God begins to reveal himself to man. He begins to show himself in different ways with different names. Job, one of the oldest books in the Bible, and with Job, they knew him as El Shaddai. They knew him as the mighty one, the magnificent one, the powerful one, the creator. Then with Abraham, he began to reveal himself. He came as Elohim and spoke to Abraham and told him to sacrifice Isaac. And then he showed himself as Jehovah Jireh and provided a lamb for the sacrifice. In Exodus, he reveals himself to the children of Israel is Jehovah Rapha, who is our healer. As each need arises, as each situation demands, God reveals himself as the one to meet that need. And then in verse 14 of John, we hear something a little bit different because up until this time, God is meeting needs and God is meeting situations. But in 14 it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Referring to the prophecy in Isaiah 7, Matthew 1.23 says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. The God of the universe has now come to dwell with man again. He has come to walk with man again. And he, he's there with us. And he's walking with us there. But it's not long before he begins to try to explain to his disciples and to prepare them for the fact that he's leaving again. And what is it he says to them? He says in John 14, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another, which means another of the same sort, helper. The King James calls it a comforter. And he says that he may be with you forever. Verse 17 says, That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it does not behold him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. In John 16 verse 7, he says it to him like this, But I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper shall not come to you. But if I go away, I will send him to you. Now, I'm not a Greek scholar, or obviously, as you heard from the other terminology earlier, I'm also so can't speak Hebrew very well. But the Vines tells us that this word for helper or comforter here is called parakletos. Para means to walk alongside. It's where we get the word parallel, where we've got two lines running. It was used in a court of justice to denote one who pleads another's cause, an intercessor or an advocate. So Jesus is telling them, I'm going to send another to walk alongside with you, one that's just like me. It's better for you. Right now I'm walking beside you, but he's going to be with you and in you. Isaiah chapter 40 tells us in verse 28, Do you not know, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not grow weary or become tired. His understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet... Those who wait for the Lord. Let's stop right there for a second. This word wait is not like you're sitting there drumming your hands and waiting on God. 
It's the idea of braiding hair. It's the idea of plaiting hair. You know, the Bible tells us a three-cord strand is not quickly broken. So he's saying, as we become braided together with him, those that wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired, and they will walk and not become weary. Now, that's not just telling us that God's just going to hand us some strength and send us on our own. It's a matter of us being one with Him. God's desire isn't just to get us to heaven someday. He wants fellowship with us. He wants relationship with us now. He wants to walk with us. He wants to be one with us, to live our lives with us on a daily basis. He wants to be Emmanuel, God with us, to each of us. This Christmas season, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, let's truly make Him Emmanuel in our lives.